there's something I've been wanting to do, and that is to show you some of the things I've done around the RV. Uh, some things I've installed, some, some innovative ideas that I've put to use. And one of them is the cheap handling fix. I'll show you about that. Also, I installed a steering stabilizer. Now, I did all this myself. You can pay to have these things done, but uh, you can do them yourself. Also, installing these uh, solar panels on the tow dolly so that I can swivel them around, follow the sun. This generator box, I, I built this in order to house a, uh, a Honda 2200 watt inverter generator. But I want to tell you about this internet situation we got into. I posted a uh, question on one of the Facebook group, uh, Quartzite Facebook groups. And the question was, what are you guys doing for internet out here? in this remote area, this dispersed camping area out here in the desert court site. And I got quite a few responses, uh, T-Mobile, Verizon, and uh, oh, just a, a bunch of AT&T. But most of them were Starlink, get Starlink. Well, that, uh, that sounds good to me, get Starlink. And so we did, we got Starlink right here. And we bought it, we got it up and running several days ago. Doing great, just great. Well, yesterday we had to take the RV out to dump, refresh our water tanks, dump our uh, holding tanks, top off our gasoline tanks, and also our propane tanks. And so when we got back, Starlink stopped working. It worked a little bit last night. We were able to watch a movie And it kept going offline, coming back on, off and on. Day, all day, we can't get it to work at all. Nothing. Now, we spent $600 on the equipment, $150 for the first month. And after taxes thing, taxes and everything, is like $800. And I'm afraid we're going to have to send this thing back. And I hate it. The reason why is because when it works, it works so well. You got like a zillion megabytes up and a zillion megabytes down per second. And uh, I just hate having to get rid of that. But, and I can't figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, so anyway, there's that. We have Verizon Jetpack, which is unlimited. And it truly is unlimited. I mean, it, it's, they don't throttle it back. It's uh, $65 a month, $70 a month, I think. Uh, but when it's when you're out here in Quartzsite and you got two million people out here trying to get on the same network, or at least a lot of them trying to get on the same network, it virtually shuts it down. We got a tower right over here. Let me show you the tower. Cell tower right there. Cell tower right there. I have heard some say that you can be too close to a cell tower. And it kind of makes sense to me. Maybe a cell tower spreads out like this, not down like this. I don't know. But you know, if you know, let me know. But anyway, I'm gonna show you some other things about the uh, about the RV, a couple of things we've done. Now this is one little hack that I'm really, really proud of, is uh, our tow dolly, when we were parked for such a long period of time, it just sits here. So I decided why not put it to use? And so what I did is I mounted my two solar panels, my uh, portable solar panels. I've got like 1800 on the roof, but these I can move around. So I decided to mount them on the ramps of the tow dolly. It worked pretty well. It's worked pretty well. Here, I'll show you how. Whatever. A little bit more. Follow the sun. So that's one little hack. It worked out pretty well, actually. It's just on, I just mounted on a couple of boards, made a swivel platform. I got a piece of wood under it to act like a uh, spacer over here too. And it's just that simple, actually. Just that simple. Well, like I say, I installed this, uh, I built this quiet box, generator box. One of the things I did is I put a, a five gallon fuel tank on top here, external tank.
So we're gonna show you the generator box and uh, see what you think. Well, the first thing you'll see, it's a Honda EU2200 inverter generator. We got a little vent here that uh, that I can uh, I can open if I feel like I need to, and the heat comes out here. This is the exhaust right here, and over here I have a 12 volt radiator fan that it's not hardwired, but uh, I just take it and I plug it in the 12 volt uh, socket, uh, and then when I start this, uh, this this turns on. I can shut the door and uh it uh it creates a positive uh, uh pressure inside and enforces all the heat out i've never had a problem with it this is i have the tank right here the out the external tank and a little filter here and i turn this and then i have to give it a little burp like so and then uh it cranks up i'm not going to start it but it starts up and uh it's got a about a 0.9 of a gallon here and five gallons here also i've got the insulation in here this is to uh, provide uh, uh, some noise reduction and one of the things i do when i'm running this is i put a little block of wood right there to keep it from working itself over and then another little block of wood right here and it kind of holds it in there i got a block here and a block back here see if you can see it a block back here and that keeps it in place because we don't want this exhaust uh, migrating over to the left or the right and uh, potentially catching the wood on fire and so that uh, that's it that's it right there and it works quite well this is a 30 amp cord a twist twist 30 amp cord and it goes out the back down under the RV over to the uh, And it runs down. I've got it running under the RV. Just plug it in like that. That's it. That's the way it works. This is our radiator fan over here. And I just got mounted on this uh, rack here. I have a double, a double hitch here. And so never had a problem with it. Just a backup generator. I have an onboard generator. But, uh, I just simply see no no problem with having a spare generator, of course. And then I have the regular cap that goes on there. If I have to take it out, I've got this cap too. So that's that. And this is what I replaced the Atwood water heater with. It's a, a Bosch seven gallon uh, water heater. It's a uh, residential. It's powered by 120 hour and it heats up in about, oh, about 30 minutes. You got really, really good hot water. Put an on off switch here and also put a uh, isolation valve here uh, to shut the water off. I strapped it down with the ratchet strap. I could not figure out a way to mount this thing. This seems to be working quite well. It's really, really is solid in there. It doesn't move about. Uh, it's the uh, water pump here, 12 volt water pump. And this is the gas line, the propane gas line. I've got it uh, really capped off and I've got some good insulation to keep it from moving around and uh, perhaps rupturing, rupturing it. Uh, this works out pretty well though. I'm gonna show you something else. I'm gonna show you a couple of things, a couple of other things. One is the Fomoto valve, which I mounted uh, on the oil pan. The other is the uh, steering stabilizer, which I mounted. I don't know why they don't come from the factory with the steering stabilizer. And uh, then in the back, we're gonna look at the cheap handling fix. Anyway, we've got to get under the RV. So we'll take, take our little uh, little dirty little pad here and get under, the, get under the RV. Well, we take our light with us. My precious daughter gave me this some years ago. <laughs> I use it like eight times a day. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. <laughs> well, 
I don't need these. <laughs> Not right now, anyway. <laughs> so. Well, so we have our light set up. You can see it. Now, this is the oil pan. Believe it or not, this uh, rig is easier to change the oil uh, than, uh, than uh, on that Toyota Corolla. You can get under this, plenty of room. And uh, this is the Fumoto valve right here. All I have to do is take this, just pull this little, this little tube off, take the little, this little safety switch right here. I just unplug it right here. See that? And then flip this switch right here, this valve, I mean, push it down and push it that way. And the oil, put that back in, that keeps it from accidentally being uh, activated. And then all I do is take an oil container outside of the rig and uh, I can be out there uh, and keep an eye on it. And all the oil, after I warm the engine up like 10 minutes, the oil will drain out and all I have to do is flip the switch, uh, the valve back to close and put the little safety pin in. Now, one thing I want to show you here that's very interesting is this, is this steering stabilizer. Let me see if I, and this is the steering stabilizer right here. You can see how it's hooked up, how it's connected right there. Next to your tie rod, right here. I'm having to do this with my hand here. And the spring comes along and then it attaches right here. Let's see if you get another shot of it. And it virtually Well, the other thing I wanted to show you is the cheap handling fix. That is known in these RVs, especially the uh, Ford F53 chassis and other chassis. It has to do with your sway bars, rather the position of your sway bars. It's in the rear of the vehicle here. And so we're gonna to have to get under the, uh, under the rig here in the back. And this is the sway bar right here. And the cheap handling fix, I moved it from here to here. Uh, some say it doesn't do a thing, but I guarantee you it does. And the other thing I did is, let's see, is both sides. This has two sides, a sway bar goes all the way across and attaches to the chassis. Is I replaced these bushings inside here, right in here. They're, they absolutely no bushings. They were gone, completely gone. It's easy to do, kind of. I'd give it a, a, a point, a, a six on the mechanical ability. And one other thing I did on both sides, I don't know if you can see it, but I put airbags. Can you see up in there? That's an airbag up in there and I can fill it up to 100 PSI and it virtually, uh, raises the RV to uh, about a couple of inches and it provides a great cushion. Uh, let's see, where's the other one? Over here. Can you see the airbag? Right there. The airbag's right there. Right? And a cheap handling fix as well. On this side, I moved it to that point and then I put new bushings in here. And uh, there's the airbag on this side. And when you park and you put your uh, put your jacks down, you need to uh, relieve the air pressure so it doesn't harm your, your airbag. And then here's the cheap handling fix. This, I moved it from there to there. And here is uh, your, the bushing. I replaced this bushing as well. No big deal, right? The cable that runs from the generator. Oh, this is it right here. It runs under the RV. right here and then it comes in up into my uh, electrical component uh, uh, bay 
<clears throat> well, I'd like to thank you for watching uh, this video. I hope you got something out of it, some something of value. Uh, that's how we learn is from one another, right? Uh, I want you to do something for me. Is um, you get the opportunity. Thank a veteran for their service. They're the ones who kept us free. And all the people in the military today, we thank you so much for your service. You are the ones we depend on when others try to take us down. It's you, the reason right now we speak English and we love you, we truly do. Have a good day, have a wonderful day. Don't stop, right? Do not stop, keep going.